Hi crafters, welcome back to my channel, Margaret Knob Designs. This evening we're going to start out by working on the first tutorial for this recipe box using the papers from um, Country Craft Creations uh, called What's Cooking. We will be using some different papers than what is on this box. Uh, this was my prototype or my first attempt at making this box and we used some feet on here. We're going to probably use some different ones. I think this was the last Graphic 45 ones, but it still will be with raised feet. And uh, essentially, the box itself will be essentially the same. I may change up a couple things, small things that I think might make it a little bit better, but you can. it'll still be essentially the same. So when we do make it, um, if you want it exactly like this box, you will be able to do that. Um, and if you don't, if you want to try and change to a new design, we will do that as well. Sorry, they should have checked these before I... One of the things that um, I wanted to do with this box is actually make a piece that... Um, piece of chipboard or something that I could put in here behind my um, behind my cards so that it would stop them from falling over all the time at least fall down that way but so essentially we are going to be making this box today we're going to make the dividers and um, I will uh, get started what I'd like to do is get um, the basic items uh, together for what we are going to be making. What you're going to need is um, either the what co What's Cooking paper pad. I used about um, three of this pattern paper and then um, about three of this pattern paper as well. I And then for the uh, dividers, uh, I used two different patterns, but I used about... Um, at the most one and a half two of each and then we also included in here the recipe cards um, I'll check to see um, if they're on the website now or when they're going to be going up if I can find that out from Tammy um, and you will also need some cardstock and I recommend artisan cardstock from Country Craft Creations uh, it is my favorite cardstock. So I'm going to be using for um, this next box, I'm going to be using the black artisan and I'm also going to use a black chipboard. You don't have to, but I like to use the same color chipboard when possible uh, if I'm doing black on black. And um, I also had some ribbon for inside of the box to hold the box lid back. So pick out your ribbon that you'd like to have. Um, I used some ribbon on top here for that decoration. We'll be doing that again. Uh, I do not know where I got these spoons and forks and knives from. I believe they came off of a Amazon. If they're not from Amazon, then I got them probably from Butterbee Scraps. Um, unless I got them in a swap or something. Um, those are really the only places that I ever have bought any metal um, items. So it's very possible these came from Butterbee scraps. And then I also did a little bit of ribbon back here so you know this flap can be raised up. And then I used one of the tags on this part of the, um, to hold the easel up. And this goes down. The other thing with the cards in here is I still am going to do some of the cutouts on these cards. I just haven't gotten to that yet and we'll talk about that then. So you're going to need chipboard for the box in and of itself. Um, and then also on the inside for the dividers, I use chipboard, but you can use um, uh, a thicker cardstock. You could even take the, like the artisan cardstock and um, maybe even double it up together if you don't want to use chipboard or if you have some leftover longer pieces of chipboard you could even do that and if let's say you're using the black paper uh, or cardstock you could um, take and wrap them in the black if you want to cover them all the way around or all the way over or another option is if it's you have um, 
the craft cardstock. You can also uh, paint, not paint, but or use a permanent marker to cover around the edges of the craft cardstock if you have any um, craft showing rather than the black cardstock. Uh, so we're going to put this together a couple of different ways. I'm going to cut out my pieces and then I will be back to give you the uh, measurements of all the pieces for um, for this box. So we'll see you in a minute. Hi crafters. Well, I'm back. So um, I'm going to give you the measurements for um, all the chipboard and the cardstock that's going to mat the chipboard or mat the box. And then I'm going to come back and um, after that, and I'm going to go ahead and get the matting done on the chipboard. And then I will show you, we will actually put the box together uh, and talk about how that is all going together. So starting off chipboard wise, you're going to need at least three pieces of chipboard for uh, the recipe box. So starting off two pieces, um, cut at five inches by five inches. That'll be both sides of the box. Then the front of the box will be five by six and a half. That's one. And the back will be five by six and a half. That's one. And another five by six and a half, and that's the bottom of the box. Then on the top box, the cover of the box, the cover itself is we are increasing it by one eighth of an inch so that we can um, get the matting and everything inside of the box or, you know, for the cover to go down. So the top cover is going to be six and five eighths by five and one eighth. That's the top of the box. Then the two easels on the top. Uh, in the last box, I made what the... Um, angling part of the easel uh, smaller than the t than the front piece but I'm this one I'm going to make them both the same size so you are going to need two pieces of six and a half by five and then for the sides of the um, of the top of the box for the cover you will need two strips of one inch by five and one eighth so two of those, and then one strip for the very front of the cover is one inch by six and five eighths. And um, we don't need one for the back because we are actually going to attach the back um, to the back of the box. So we won't need a piece of chipboard for that. So then for cardstock, hopefully I, I might have missed one piece and I will give you that um, in, in a minute as soon as I... Okay, so what you're going to need is two pieces of your cover cardstock, uh, eight by eight. This will be for the sides matting. And then you will need three pieces of eight by nine and a half. And what that'll be for, so that's three pieces of the eight by nine and a half. That'll be for the front cover, front of the box, the bottom of the box, and the back of the box. So that's three of those. And then you are going to need um, a piece of cardstock nine and five eighths by eight and one eighth. That is for the top cover. Then for the sides, um, you are going to be making the side. This is the side of the covering the pieces of these chipboards. They are going to be two inches by eight and one eighth. And then, so two pieces, two by eight and one eighth. And then one piece of two by nine and five eighths. And then for the easels, you will need two pieces of nine and a half by eight. And cutting all of these out, this took about eight pieces of cardstock to cut all this out. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm going to put on the back of all of this chipboard my uh, tape. And I will get it glued down onto the 
cardstock pieces and we will come back and talk about that. Most of them I will mat and get them ready for how we're going to put the box together, but um, uh, I will show you one that we can do together. But that's your measurement so far for the box. I'll be back in a little bit when I have the rest of that together. Thanks. Hey crafters, well I am back and what I have is I have all of the pieces wrapped. I did change the measurements on a couple of um, uh, items which was for the top um, side pieces. The side, the side pieces on the top, these are the ones that are going to be at the side of the cover. I changed the matting, not the chipboard, just the matting to two inches by six and one eighth, two of them, those two. And then um, the front is two by eight and five eighths. So that was changed. And I'll put, I'll, I'll put that in the um, front of the other um, where I gave the, me the, the measurements originally. So that is what I have changed on the measurements. And what I ended up doing was putting everything uh, back together. And actually, even with this um, back easel and the easel front, I actually changed the measurements on that because I'm putting it together a little bit differently. So that is the cardstock, just the mat, you know, the cover cardstock is going to be eight and a half by seven. So two of those eight and a half by seven. But again, I will put that on the front part of this video. So what we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead and put this box together. That's our next step here. And um, what I do is I lay it out like this to put it together and then we'll put the sides on and then attach everything else. So. The first step that I take is um, by attaching this or getting this um, lined up with that side and then putting the, pulling this up with this side pulled up. So I am going to take my bone folder and I just like to run this along that side because it works that piece of cardstock to give us a little bit of a cleaner edge on there. So this is the front of the book, and this is the bottom book. I keep saying book because of the mini albums. Um, this is the bottom of the recipe box. And what we're going to do with that is we're going to get our glue on this side, which is our front of our box. And when I wrapped this cardstock, I left on the front the side flap on both sides and the bottom of the um, cardstock that I'm wrapping. The top piece, I, I brought that in, but the other flaps I left open because we're going to use that for wrapping or attaching, I shouldn't say wrapping, but really attaching um, most of the box together. That way it saves on having to use strips and so we're going to measure this up. I put it down and then I will pull it up so that we have this straight. We may end up needing to put some strips in here only because of um, some of this black not being covered because of the flaps. So I may just even lay a flat sheet down in here or I will make some strips, um, you know, some building strips for, for our box. So we've got that. Even though that that's showing right now, when that's up, it's not going to show that little bit of glue in there. So then I'm gonna take the back part of my box, and I've got my two side flaps, my bottom flap, and the front is wrapped down. 
So we're going to take this and we are going to run our glue along here. And I like to use the glue rather than tape because I just think that glue in the long run stays longer and better and is just makes for a better fit to our recipe box because what happens is is that our glue marries into the cardstock into the fibers of the cardstock and um, just measuring to make sure that we're even and I think that it actually is a longer or a better uh, stick for a longer term. You are not going to believe what I just did. <laughs> oh God, I just love myself sometimes. Oh, oh goodness gracious. I can't believe I did that. I just... Okay, everyone out there, you can laugh at me now. <laughs> oh, goodness. I'm going to have to cover that over. I can't believe I did that. Ay, sometimes. Were you all yelling at me? Telling me that I was doing it wrong? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Sorry. All right, so um, our topic for this video is leave in the comments below <laughs> the greatest crafty opportunity you've had. And if, in, if you've been watching me for a while, you know that anything that goes a little bit awry, I call a crafty opportunity because it's an opportunity for me to fix something, change how I put it together, yeah, or just how I do my project differently. Um, one of the things that I think we can always be assured of is that um, in any handmade or homemade project, there will always be crafty opportunities <laughs> that are abundant to our um, to our projects. So <laughs> that was one number one right there. Well, it might be number two because I m changed up some of my um, some of my measurements in making this. So we've got these two on here. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our sides, and we're going to do the same thing with our sides. We're going to get these um, aligned with the box and get that put together. And then I just bring that up so I make sure that it's all set and even and will flap up and match up to the sides. And again, all of that white will be covered up once we're putting our box together. Hey, I said box, not, not book. There we go. Now 
there is um, if if we need to fix something or cover something a little bit better we can always do that and help the box uh, stay well put together by putting on some structure strips to our box like up here because I can't know if you see where I ripped that piece of uh, cardstock off I probably am going to put um, a construction strip um, along there just to cover up any of that kind of uh, funky glue on there. So the next thing that I want to do is I'm going to go around and I am going to put um, these sides together and I'm going to use the flaps on the sides to get our box even and I will hold this up straight so that I can get uh, good alignment on my recipe box. All the while wiping up our glue as we go. But everything's going to be covered by matting and uh, so all of those will be our just our hidden secrets as we go. So what we're going to do is we will put together the top of the box yet tonight, or tonight for me anyways, um, and then what we'll, we'll do is, is I'm not putting the easel on because I don't want to put the easel on until I've got my matting started, and so there's going to be, we're just going to finish up putting this together tonight and then we'll work on the matting and the next steps with uh, in our next tutorial. This, uh, this took me a little longer tonight than I had expected. I should have expected that with all the cutting. You know, that's the thing that takes a long time is the cutting of the cardstock and chipboard always is, takes a little bit of time. Not that it's hard, it's just it just takes some time. But I tell you, I love making boxes. I don't know why, I just do. <laughs> so I hope that you are going to enjoy this recipe box too as a project that will last a long time and it should with the um, with the structure of it, it uh, should last for a very long time. The other thing that I was thinking about with this recipe box, now I've never done this and I'm thinking that it would work, but I don't know, leave me a comment down in the comments below if you know for a fact, but I was thinking about taking and putting Mod Podge over my paper on the whole recipe box so that it, in case there was any spills or splatters or anything like that in my kitchen, that it would be a little bit more um, able to be cleaned and um, not ruined if I had any splashes. All right, so there is our box put together and messy, messy, messy. That is going to be our front, but I'll put a strip across that in just a minute. What we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and do the same thing with uh, the top of this, um, the cover for the box. So what we're going to be doing is taking the cover and we are going to be putting our side strips on and then we will attach it by putting, um, oh, Sorry, that's the wrong way. We're going to put our uh, front on first, and then we're going to put our sides on because then we're going to wrap these around to the back. <clears throat> so what I had done is, just like with the sides, I have this wrapping to the side of the box and not, um, and not uh, 
the other way around to the front of the cover. So um, we are going to put this together. You know, and the other thing that I just want to say is that with any of these projects that I make, somebody else could have made the exact same thing in the past or, you know, I'm sure somebody's made a recipe box before. I'm sure I'm not the first one who's who has done it. So um, I don't claim that this is uh, specifically my original um, design. Um, all I can say is that I didn't copy somebody else's YouTube video. It's my own design or structure that I put together on my own, not, but not that somebody else hasn't done it previously. I'm sure they have. So I just think it's all about sharing our crafty opportunities with each other. All right. Make sure that's in there all the way. Right. And then we're going to attach these right onto here as well. And We will pull that together as well. So, matching up that chipboard. And then we'll bring this up right away and bring this flap around so that it pulls our structure together, our cover. And what I'm doing is everything that I'm putting together, I am putting on the top of the chipboard or at the side of the other piece of the chipboard so that it's consistent with how I'm putting it all together. for this recipe box. All right, then our last piece. Just trying to get this even. All right, and then we will do the same with this piece. Make that even. If you're a little bit off the way that this is uh, this tab works you should be okay even if you're a little bit off and that's the other reason why I wanted to use um, black chipboard with the black paper because the black chipboard um, will not stand out if something isn't quite perfectly matched so works well so the next thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to take and put our box together. But before we do that, I want to just check my lid, make sure my lid fits over the top. Ooh, it's a little tighter than my other one. So we're a little tighter, but it's the same measurements as I had the last time. But.
All right, so we are going to put our glue on the top of our lid, or the flap that's on our lid. And I am going to put this back onto our recipe box. Slide that all the way back so that it's even. And we are going to glue that down. So there we go. We have our recipe box constructed. Again, that's a little tighter than it was the last time. But um, that is our box. Everything put together. And what will end up happening is, is I'm going to cut some construction strips. And they will go onto here and onto the back of here. But I need to get some of our matting down first. Um, I can get this front piece on, but I can't get the rest of everything else on. And as far as filling in this chipboard, we're just fine to leave that open. We're going to be matting all of this with our paper as well. So um, that's what we'll work on the next time when we come back. But this is our recipe box constructed. And we will also work on getting the feet on after we get the matting. I will get everything cut out that needs to be cut out for our matting and give you those measurements. But I will tell you that when I mat, I can give you the, my measurements or what I cut everything at, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's gonna be exactly like yours. Because um, sometimes things just are like an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth of an inch off, and that it just isn't perfect. So. My suggestion is is that um, I'll give you the measurements that I can, but always measure and remeasure um, what you have so that you can make sure that your paper matting is perfect. Now, this part of the box shouldn't be an issue because it always should go together pretty much the same, but nonetheless, it's always good to check. So thank you so much for watching today, and um, I will see you real soon. I'm thinking t today's Tuesday, so um, I think that I, I will try to get the next one up on Thursday or Friday, and um, we'll try to get this finished off um, by next week, Monday or so. Um, thanks so much for watching. Have a great night.